You know what? Today's show is a top 10 list. The top 10 biggest audiophile mistakes and how to, or I hope, how to avoid them. I'm sort of alerting you to them if you haven't already gone down that road. And also, yeah, sure, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in this episode. But as for the top 10 list, well, we're going to start with number 10. And number 10 is, and I think we've all been here, that you, you held off buying what you really wanted, that dream speaker or amplifier or DAC or turntable. You couldn't quite get there. You didn't have enough money or whatever reason. You didn't quite get there and you settled for something not as good. And then you came to regret that, had to unload the piece that you bought, and then spend even more money to get back to where you should have started. That. Oh man, like I say, we've all been there. So don't do that. If you're, if you're new to this game, save up. Get what you really want the first time. Okay, so number nine is closely aligned to number 10. That is, you have the right one. You have the right speaker or amp or DAC or whatever it is, and you sell it because you want to try something else. <laughs> and then some time goes by, weeks, months, a year, and you come to regret it. That that was the right one. Yeah, you screwed up. You sold the right one, and now you have to spend more money and go back and get another one like that first one. Yeah, that really hurts. That really hurts, because you knew it. You knew when you were selling it, you were screwing up, but you did it anyway because you were distracted. <laughs> you were chasing something. Nah, when you find the right one, stick with it. And that's true for so many things in life. So number eight is, is different, because number eight is about power conditioners. And people hear about them, they read about them, they have friends that have good experiences with them. You buy a power conditioner, and either it does nothing, it doesn't change the sound of your system, or actually it makes it sound worse. That was me. That happened to me. I felt like, no, I like the sound better without the power conditioner. Yeah, it made a difference, but it wasn't a good difference. So I had to unload that and lose money on owning a power conditioner. So be careful. Now, I'm not saying that's true for everybody. I'm just saying it does happen a lot of the time that power conditioners are not the solution to your problem. As for number seven, and I have to tread gently now because I know a lot of my friends and patrons are into it, but real to real can be uh, a money pit, right? The machine is going to cost a lot of money, a good one in, in good condition. And of course, the tapes and so-called master tapes, those can be a fortune. You got to really think about that before you do it. What do you really want out of this new format? You know, or some other format, like cassettes, which are lower stakes generally. Yeah, but it can be expensive too. So anyway, so changing to a new format, though it looks kind of cool, mm, I don't know. Think before you jump. Number six is don't buy the wrong speaker. The wrong speaker for you it could be a great speaker, but it might not be the right one for you. You know, it might not be a good match to your room. It might not be a good match for the electronics that you already have. It might not be a good match for the kind of music that you play or how loud you like to listen. So it could be a terrific speaker. It gets rave reviews. A lot of the, your audiophile buddies say it's a terrific speaker, but it might not be the right one for you. And again, it could be a costly mistake. A lot of these mistakes are costly because you have to back out of that and get something else. So again, think before you jump. So as for number five, you know, I'm kind of nervous even about bringing up number five, and that is that you want to be in the audio business. You want to uh, be a distributor. Yeah, you've been to Japan. You've met some really cool companies. They don't have distribution in the US or in England or wherever you are. You want to do that, right? Or you want to be a designer. You want to make a cable. Cables, you know, profit margins are huge. What could possibly go wrong? Well, <laughs> all sorts of things. So, I don't know. I've seen so many people try and almost all of them fail. Because A, well, first you have to be a business person. You have to really understand business. You have to understand marketing. That's more important than ever. And just t be a people person and talk to people about whatever it is you're trying to sell. It's hard. And you have to have a great, great 
product. So you need a great product, you need marketing, you need business savvy, and if you're not really good at all of those things, your chance of success are kind of small. So anyway, that's, that's a tricky one. Number four is you broke your speaker <laughs> or blew it up. Usually what that means is that you played music so loud that the voice coil melted or deformed enough that the driver no longer moved and therefore it didn't make any sound anymore or it made sound but it was very distorted or buzzing or something and you got to get a new driver. So it's a drag depending on how easy it is to get to the driver or have your dealer fix it for you or the company can handle it. It's a hassle, something to be avoided. So, so if, here's the thing, if you're playing music loud and you're starting to hear it distort, turn down the volume. Word of advice. Number three. Now, number three isn't so common nowadays, but it was a thing 10, 20 years ago, and that is that you had a nice stereo system, but then you thought, you know, I should get a home theater. I love movies. I'm watching a lot of movies at home. I want to feel that energy, right? So you get a five channel or a seven channel system, right? And it's great. Movies sound fantastic now. Catch is that the music doesn't sound so good anymore. It sounded way better when you had a stereo system. So some people, you know, transition, so to speak, from stereo to home theater or slash multi-channel, realize it was a mistake, and then go back to stereo. For number two, I'm mostly addressing you older audiophiles, uh, and you're the people that when digital came in, when the CD came out in the 80s, you were really fast to dump your vinyl collection and you were like, good, I'm done with analog, CDs the way of the future, and here we are. And not all of you by any stretch, but some of you said, you know, I got to get back into vinyl. And I'm always hearing from you people how much you enjoy it. So dumping an entire collection, hundreds or thousands of LPs, and then having to rebuy them later on, that's an expensive mistake. <laughs> and I think people are doing that now with CDs, that they're just dumping their CDs because they say, I don't need CDs, I'm just going to stream everything. Mm, yeah, but again, it could be a costly mistake. And by the way, amassing a record collection, an LP collection, or a CD collection, it's a part of your life. I treasure, I really mean that, I treasure the vinyl that I bought when I was a kid. Not all of it, but there's lots of stuff that I have that I bought when I was a teenager that I still play because I always took really good care of my records. It's, it's precious to me, it really is. Now, speaking of precious, number one, the number one biggest mistake by far, and this is, this is serious, abusing your hearing with loud sound. That is a major no-no. If you go to concerts or sports events or lawnmowers or whatever, anything that's really loud and you have constant exposure for more than 10 or 15 minutes, you are asking for hearing loss, no doubt about it. And if you hear ringing in your ears after loud exposure to sound, that is kind of nature's way of telling you that you are screwing up big time. Yeah, I know hearing aids have gotten a lot better over these last few years, but they're not as good as good as naturally good hearing. So yeah, don't don't take chances with your hearing. That is, yeah, that's no, no kidding around this time please be careful. And if you have any concerns, obviously you should see an audiologist as soon as possible. I'm sorry to end on a downer, but this is serious business and it's for everyone, not just audiophiles. Anyway, picking things up again. Yeah, it's now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hey, this one comes to us from Clint. He's been selling Hi-Fi for 18 years and it's allowed him to put together a pretty decent system. His turntable is a Marantz TT15S1 with an Erica LX moving coil cartridge. The SACD player is a Marantz Kai Ruby. Server, Sony HAP Z1 ES. There's some big Macintosh in there. A Marantz C53 preamp, solid state preamp. And those giant mono blocks are Macintosh MC 1.25 kilowatts mm. and the rack is salamander and the speakers are Revel Ultima Studio 2 towers but soon there'll be a JBL K2S 9900 in the system thanks Clint 
Welcome back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. If you like these videos, if you like my reviews and thought pieces like this one today and interviews and Audiophiliac viewer systems of the day, please consider joining my Patreon. It's one of the main things that keeps this channel going and alive and growing. So the address is on the screen right now. And if you just like a video, yeah, please consider hitting the like button and uh, subscribing to the channel. That would be fantastic. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.